very much. Can you also come on the walk, uh, walk on the red carpet and let's appreciate you as well. Our excellencies, you're welcome. Let's appreciate them. Please walk on the red carpet. Thank you for coming again and again. Thank you for coming. you keep coming to church from Sunday to Sunday. Have a wonderful service, church. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, church. There is something that God promised us, and that is heaven on earth. So I just want somebody, just one person, who wants to have heaven on earth. Just raise your hands and wave it on the Jehovah. Because something is moving. Something is happening in the atmosphere. The grace of the Almighty is descending. And we are heaven. 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 On earth. Heaven. Heaven. On earth. Oh. Oh. empowering the kingdom of the Lord is within me and he's calling me to the heavenly spirit of unity to our community show his ability the will of the Lord for his children is to demonstrate perpetuate
something's changing see his glory feels like i would know that something's moving something is changing see his glory it's like i would know that yeah something's moving yeah something's changing Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we are grateful unto you. It's a new day. It's a new season. We honor you, Jehovah. We thank you for who you are. Thank you because you are God and you are God forever. Thank you for being God to us in Four Square Gospel Church at Socorro. Thank you for ruling and reigning. We give you all the glory. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Let it bring forth fruit that will abide forever. Thank you, O God. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Please help me welcome your neighbor. Welcome to church. Welcome to church. Welcome to church this morning. Hallelujah. Something is moving. Something is shifting. I can see his glory. And it's like heaven on earth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's put our hands together for the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, the ruler of the universe, the mighty God of Israel, the one that opens and no man can shut, the one that shuts and no man can open, the creator, the miracle worker, the one that does excellent things, the one that heals us, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Shekui, Jehovah El Shaddai, mighty God of Israel, Allah Badaino, 
adagba ma paro ye olorun awon baba wa oba ti o wa lana oba ti o wa loni oba to wa titi lai lai ato farati ato gbekele oba ti ki doju tini oba ti wa pelu wa ninu ijowo ninu ijogbo ninu wahala to yo wa kuro bi omo hallelujah This God rules in the affairs of men. This month has been declared the month of the king. Even if it is just one verse of this song, I'd like us to take it together. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Just one verse, just the first verse. And please do it. Sing from anywhere. You don't need to come up the altar. All hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Let angels prostrate fall. Lead for the understand this is not part of the message at all but what the lord has told me to do as i just stepped into this place crown him lord of all in nigeria we crown him this week we crown the king of kings as the lord of all in nigeria let's take it again if that's all we will do we'll stop like that all hail the power of jesus name Can you lift up your voice unto God and crown Jesus Lord of all? One person, 
One person, lift up your voice. Legebo shanderebo sinta. Lei masante rebo kuribo shinta. Bring me. Magabo shanderebo sinta. Blessed be your name, O oh God. Go on. Um, Domingo. I want you to crown the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. I want you to pray for their Pastor Domingo. Brother Domingo, pray from there and crown him Lord of all Jehovah in Nigeria. God, we crown you as the Lord of Lords. The heavens open and the peace of Nigeria come down today in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Who is this King of Glory? Who is the King of Glory? The Lord of Hosts. He is the King of Glory. Shout Hallelujah again! Amen. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Please be seated. This morning, we are looking at the king, my father, is coming for me. The king, my father, he is coming for me. Matthew 25. I'll be reading from verse 1 to 12. Matthew 25. I'm reading about the story of the virgins. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. We took their lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lambs and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lambs. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, not so, not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Verse 11. Afterward came also the other virgin, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. That will not be our portion in the name of Jesus. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. I'm going to be reading a story. I encountered this story a long time ago, and then my husband brought it to my attention again. It's a story of um, Armenia earthquake. There was an earthquake in Armenia in 1989, and the promise of an earthly father. Please listen to me. Just follow me. Some of you may know about this story. It's a life story. It's a true story. It had to do with the 8.2 earthquake that struck Armenia back in 1989 when the country was flattened, killing over 30,000 people in less than four minutes. Whether the incident took place in Gumri or Spitak remains to be seen. Those were the areas that took the brunt of the loss. In the midst of utter devastation and chaos, a father left his wife securely at home and rushed to the school where his son was supposed to be, only to discover that the building had been flattened as a pancake. After the traumatic initial shock, this man remembered the promise he had made to his son. No matter what, I'll always be there for you. And tears began to fill his eyes. As he looked at the pile of debris that once was the school, he looked hopeless, but he kept remembering his commitment to his son. 
he began to concentrate on where he walked his son to school each morning. Remembering his son's classroom will be in the back right corner of the building. He rushed there and started digging through the rubble. As he was digging, other fallen parents arrived, clutching their hearts, saying, my son, my daughter. Other well-meaning parents tried pulling off what was left of the school, saying, it's too late. They are dead. You can't help. Go home. Come on, face reality. There's nothing you can do. You are just going to make things worse. To each parent, he responded with one line. Are you going to help me now? And then he proceeded to dig for his son, stone by stone. The Bible makes us to understand that there was a stone that followed the children of Israel. There was a rock that followed them. Everywhere they went in the wilderness, it followed them. And he said that that rock is Jesus. The fire, the fire chief showed up and tried to pull him off the school's debris. This is a life story I'm saying. Saying, fires are breaking out. Explosions are happening everywhere. You are in danger. We'll take care of it. Please go home. To which this loving, caring, Armenian father asked, are you going to help me now? The police came and said, you are angry, distraught, and it's over. You are endangering others. We'll take care of it. Go home. No one helped. Courageously, he proceeded alone because he needed to know for himself, is my boy alive or is he dead? He dug for eight hours, 12 hours, 24 and 36 hours. Then, in the 38th hour, he pulled back a boulder and heard his son's voice. The man screamed his son's name, Amandi! He heard his father and said, Dad, it's me. Dad, I told the other kids not to worry. I told them that if you are alive, you will save me. And when you save me, they'll be saved. You promise. You promise, Dad, no matter what, I'll always be there for you. And you did it, Dad. There are 14 of us left out of 33. Dad, we are scared, hungry, thirsty, and thankful you are here. When the building collapsed, he made a wedge, like a triangle, and he saved us. Come on out, boy. He said, no, Dad. Let the other kids come out first. Because I know you will get me. No matter what, I know you'll be there for me. As it was for Amandi in 1989. So it is for you today in 2019 in Nigeria. I'm sure my father, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, he will come for me. He will come for me. Let me just make uh, his position known. Because what I'm talking about today is like we have left it. We don't go there anymore. I asked the Lord this morning, why? He said, yes, we are going back to the basics. We are going back to the beginning. And he was talking to me. And I believe he was talking to us as a church. He said, he's coming back. He's very sure that he's going to come back. Our concentration has not been on the fact that he said he will come back. He said, I will come back. Behold, I come quickly. And his word is yea and amen. He said, I will come back. Are we preparing for his coming back? The things that we do, do they present as people that are waiting for their father? In the midst of the rubble, in the midst of the trouble, in the midst of all the chaos that we have in Nigeria and all over the world, are you waiting that what he said he would do, that he's able to do it? Number two is that he said he would be coming for his saints. He's coming for his own. You must be able to understand his voice and his language. 
Every sign that we need to have is on ground. Everything that you need to know, you should know by now. So many things that they are strange even to our normal culture. But they are like normal life to us right now. Are you a saint of God? Are you a child of God? When we first met him, what I know we used to do, the moment you give your life to Christ, the next thing is we put our Bibles under our shoulder and we begin to go around trying to preach the word. We want to establish the fact that we are children of God. We sing, we are a new creation. We are new people. New, all things are passed away. All things have become new. Are we talking about newness of life anymore? The God of all the earth that is greater than Amadi's father has asked me to ask you, are you a saint of God? Are you a child of God? It's unfortunate that I will use this example because I know that God just wanted to confirm what he was saying to me this morning, that things have shifted totally. Things have changed totally. I don't know where we found it, that a Christian, a child of God will fill a form and they will ask you, how old are you? You are 45 and you are feeling that you are 35. Even if you cut it, instead of saying 45 and you say 40, ah, ah, it is strange to me, but it is a lie. And people say that that is a normal thing. Is it normal? For the saints of God, it is not normal. It is not normal. And that means that is what we are doing. The man that is coming, the king that is coming, is not coming for that kind of a church. He's not coming for saints that are stealing. He says, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Does the king know your voice? Does the father know your voice? When you cry to him, does he know that you are the one that is speaking? When you are under the rubble, can you actually cry out and say, I know my father will come for me. And because he will come for me, I will stay where he asked me to stay. I will just stay there. It doesn't matter what every other person is saying out there. I'm going to stay there. And as many of you that are around me that are willing to stay, wait, my father is coming. Out of 33, 14 were left. All others, either they are struggling or whatever it is that they are doing, they've gone. And of, uh, 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 as is expected, they pass. In the midst of the Christ in the land, can you be identified as a saint? I speak to you, I speak to myself. Because first and foremost, when a word comes, I first of all treat it with myself. It has to be medicine to my soul first and foremost before it can bear fruit in your life. And then he says it will come suddenly. The third thing is that he said it will come suddenly. He's sure that it will come. And he's coming for saints. I don't know how many saints he will find. We counsel young people that want to get married. Very few would you find children of, of Christians. Very few would you find that you will find them as virgins. They say, yes, we have fixed the wedding, so we are, we are like married. We are like married. And when you say things like that, uh -uh, it's like, what is the problem? Hallelujah. 
he says he will come suddenly. The, the story of the ten virgins, they are like all of us that come here every Sunday. We dress up and we come to church. But only the God of heaven knows where and where we've been and what, and what we've been up to. And heaven is crying out because the time is short. The time is very short. I sat in my office just last week. And I was there and somebody that I didn't know him too well, but very known to my husband. He came, we were discussing some very good projects that he has on. And I said, yes, we must partner with you. This is fantastic. This is a good job. A lot of research had been done. He had done so much on his computers. He had done so much. He has covered many states of this federation. And I said, yes, at least the ones you have done, let's work on that. Let's harvest that. Let's utilize that. So bring the papers. By Monday. By Monday. Say by Monday. Bring the papers. We will have a look at them. I didn't know what he had to do. Just there. On his way. In Kogi. Some kidnappers. I think they attacked him. And it's not just picking him up. They killed him. They killed him. All those things died with him. Somebody that American embassy, the American government had spent so much on. The projects that he described to me, they were projects that are so beautiful, good for Nigeria. On his laptop, Carry them around on his heart. The burdens are there. But that was the end of that man. Just like that. I'm telling you that the time is short. The time is short. All this dancing and screaming and shouting and everything, it will soon be over. We are going home. We are going home. And when he's going to come, he's going to come like a thief in the night. That's what he says. Because if he would not come like that, if, if, uh, if the good man, Luke chapter 12, verses 39 to 40, he says, and this know, that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not have suffered his house to be broken through. Be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man cometh at an hour when ye think not. Every day I just say, maybe, paradventure, it's not that uh, I, I, I'm afraid and they're looking forward to dying, but paradventure, this is the last preaching that I will preach. Where would I find myself on the other side of eternity? Paradventure, today is your last time in this service in Asokoro. It won't be strange if you go to be with the Lord. It will not be strange. Because your age mates have gone. Juniors to you have gone. Wives have gone. Husbands have gone. So what is holding you here? Grace. What is holding us? Grace. And we shouldn't take this grace in vain. Will you be ready when the Lord shall come? Will you be ready when the Lord shall come. Oh, I will be ready. Even the choir is not ready. I will be ready. I use your mouth to sing. Ready when, when the Lord, Lord shall come. come. Oh, I, I will, will be ready. ready. I will be ready. I will be ready. Ready when the Lord 
shall come. I'm asking you a question that I asked myself all through the night today. That if the Lord shows up now, Baba, am I ready? Am I ready? What are the things that will be counted? I've been privileged to be by the side of people that are dying. Variety of people, some are crying in pain. And some are saying, I can see heaven open. And I can see angels waiting for me. And I, I can see a beautiful environment. Don't call me back. Let me go. But there are some that are crying. The language that they even talk about, you run away when you, when you are near them. What will your portion be? Are you a saint of God? Are you even born again at all? Have you given your life to Christ? If you have, have you backslidden? Or are you standing right before him? He said, I should tell you, he will come suddenly and he is coming now. He is coming soon. Nigeria will witness the coming of the king. Hallelujah. Number four, if we are ready, then serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. Because number one, his coming is sure. Number two, he's coming for his saints. Number three, he will come suddenly. He says, serve me. We must be ready for his coming. While waiting, there are things that he has asked us to do. Number one, preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. I have a pack of um, tracks on my table. The Lord reminded me of those tracks. Yes, I may not like those tracks. Have I written my own? Or can I get something else that can match the caliber of people that come to my office if I cannot give them tracks? Preach the gospel. When evangelism is called, in the beginning, in the beginning, when evangelism is called, what we do all of us, pastors, heads of ministries, everybody, workers, children, young people, we all go on the streets to preach the gospel. But that's not the case in Asokoro anymore. That's not the case. I'm not talking about anybody, I'm talking about myself. When last did I join any group? that says that they are going on evangelism and it's, in that it's their turn to go for evangelism. And I went with them. It may look old-fashioned, but what the Lord told me this morning is give me that old-time religion. Give me that old-time religion. Give him that old-time religion. It's good enough for me. That was when we had miracles. We had miracles upon miracles. We had things that proved to us that this king that we serve is king of kings. The Lord of glory is his name. We spoke and it came to pass exactly as we declared it. Because there was power in the house. He says, preach the word. Preach the word. Let's go back to the streets and preach. Let's go out in the mornings and preach. Let's go and preach. Compel them to come. Strategies will work only when we have gone. We must go. All the strategies inside the church, they are insufficient until they come. We must go out and bring them. This church is about finding, winning, and nurturing. 
Before we begin to nurture, we must find. We must find. Number two, to support the work of missions. For many reasons, a number of people cannot go at all. But you can sponsor people to go and stay in the house and groan and pray. That's why there's Omega 2. I say, you don't have to put one million naira in Omega 2. You don't need one billion. You don't need 10 million. You don't need even 20,000. If all that you have is 500 naira, but you are consistent with your 500 naira, it will multiply. And it will do great and mighty things. I don't know what I was reading. One of the documents on Omega 2. That as at 2016, Omega 2 was running 180 million naira per annum. Which means that we had about 15 million distributed to missionaries. What is happening now? Maybe 24 or something like that. Million. Per annum. I'm talking about per annum. I don't know where I read it, but it's part of the document on Omega 2. Am I speaking to somebody this morning? Am I speaking to somebody this morning? And it says, teach the word. Teach the word. Teach the word. Teach the word. Let's come together and pray that the Lord will bring laborers into his vineyard. We need to get all around us to believe that our Father will return. He will return to us as individuals. He will return to Nigeria. He will return to Nigeria. We have seen his hands before. And we can see it again. And we will see it again. Oh, Nigerians can't even say amen. Because we have all kinds of things that are going on in our hearts. I said the king will return to Nigeria. In conclusion, he said, Behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. It says in Revelation 21, and I want to take the whole of that. Revelation 21, verses... Um, I just want to five or something. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. And there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. And God himself shall be with them and be their God. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. Let's rise up together. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound, and the morning... Let, let me just give us a background to this. Usually they sing this song at burial. They sing this song at burial. So when I got to the place of prayer this morning, and the Lord said, when the roll is called up yonder, would you be there? There's a question that you are being asked this morning. I hope you will take it seriously. I don't know why this message is the way it is. I hope you will take it seriously. When that roll is called up there, will you be there? Her adventure you are even here, you have not had this opportunity to openly come up and say, yes, I give my life unto you. 
you need to do that first. And as we are singing this song, I would want that we close our eyes. Please, I plead with you. I'm not punishing you. So that we can concentrate. That's why I'm saying that. But if you know that when the role is called up yonder, you are not likely to be there. I need you to walk up to the altar. I'm not going to force you to do so. I'm just going to plead with you to do so. I did that in 1977. I did it in Ife, Obafemi Aulo University now. I gave my life to Christ when they said, when the role is called up yonder, will you be there? I checked my life and I knew it wasn't going to happen unless I came out and I said, here I am, Lord. Come into my life. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound And time shall be no more And the morning breaks it If you need to bright, come forward, please start coming. Just come. Leave every other person alone. I need you to come. Just come. Just come. The shore, and the roll is called up beyond the be there. For the master, let, let us labor for the master from the dawn till setting sun. Let me walk up all his wondrous love and care. Then, when all of life is over and my walk on
I would still like us to close our eyes. I have it in my spirit that there are two more people that the Lord is calling you and you are struggling with it. It doesn't matter if you have done it before, but the Lord is saying that it's like you need to come and connect with your master because tomorrow might be too late. I would want to pray with these people and I want you to join. There are two people. There are two people that are still there. I plead with you to take the step now. There are two people. Thank you. Thank you. There are two people. Please, I need... Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I get scared when I have this kind of a message. Because it's been before. I've seen this happen before. I said, I wish, I wish that I came out that day. That is not your portion. I pray for this once, Jehovah God. I join the saints of God to declare them cleansed. I join the saints of God. I join heaven to declare them saints. In the name of Jesus, Father, the process from this altar that will take them to become disciples, that they themselves will win men unto the kingdom, release unto them today in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you because I know beyond what we can pray, what we can think, what we can imagine, you will do with them. That you will transform their lives and you will make them men and women that will inherit the kingdom. Thank you, Father. I pray for all of us in this auditorium. I pray for everyone that is listening to me from anywhere in the world, wherever that we are, that Jehovah God, when the role is called up yonder, none of us will be found missing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, glorious God. In Jesus' mighty name we do pray. Amen. Please, those are the altar. Can you please just follow these pastors just for a few minutes? Don't worry. Thank you.